want to get better at World of Tanks, I use the context that these replays provide me to help demonstrate the thinking paradigms that help put you and your vehicle in the most advantageous position to help you get better damage, to help you make better trades, and ultimately, in theory, to help you improve your win rate. I'm your coach, 13 Disciple, and this is Coach's Corner. So let's get into this replay. Today's replay has been provided to us by Twitch follower Toe Missile. We are playing in an E25 on the map Karkov. So we'll start how I start most matches, and that's by examining the tank lineup. So to start with, we see we've got three artillery units, which means the map is a little more closed off than it normally would be. However, we are in a well-camoed tank destroyer, so as long as we remain camoed up, that may be less of a problem than if we were trying to brawl in a medium tank. Apart from that, we've got a KV-2 and a 45 TP rounding out all of the heavies that are in this match, so the city fight might actually be relatively light. Really scary on the enemy team is an SU-152. Shout out to the KV-2 as well. Both of those tanks have very high caliber guns, can penetrate our tank with HE rounds, and uh, would do a lot of damage. Best to avoid those tanks or engage at long range, as we'll have better accuracy than they will. Apart from that, we've got a couple of light tanks that'll be skirting around in the field, most likely. And we've got a few mediums rounding out the rest and some sniping tank destroyers. Given our tank lineup, let's head over to the minimap. So in this vehicle, uh, I would say there's probably two places, maybe three, that I would go initially. Uh, my primary location would probably be up here in this sniper's nest. This gives you pretty wide coverage of everything on the map. You'll barely be able to hit these guys over here. They will be outside of your render, but they will well, they'll be inside your render, but just outside your spot range there. A lot of times you'll see a lot of mediums come up and brawl on this side of this ridge here from both sides. And you being up here can help assist this brawl. There will be a lot of squares down in this riverbed. So anytime you get spotted out in the open, get moving because those artillery pieces will be looking to take you out of the game. Another good spot will be back in here in this area. This gives you kind of a limited area of fire, but you definitely have a lane down this way. And you will also have uh, a little bit of a lane down through here. This will be a little bit more limited. With the given fact that there's only two heavies, going into the heavy area might mean that there's just not very many targets. However, given there's three artillery, if the enemies on the opposite team have done the same analysis, if I was in a medium tank in this game, especially given the limited number of heavies, I would likely trying to be brawling in the city anywhere that's mostly safe from artillery. The last opportunity might be up here on this ledge. This is a ledge that I like to take pretty often. Um, it depends on the vehicle. This vehicle is debatable on, on if this is a good play because it's lightly armored, but it will be at the very edge of your spotting. But basically this provides you crossing damage right here. So any tank that wants to tank this corner, you'll be able to spot and have free damage on before it's in position. Once some time has passed and either you've done your damage or you haven't spotted anything in this crossing, you'll definitely want to get out. Uh, but this is a pretty decent initial play. Again, there's very limited heavies in the match, so you may not have a whole lot of targets if you end up there. So given those positions, I would probably end up at H3. That's probably where I would go uh, to start this match. So let's get into this match. A friendly reminder to everybody, I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. If you're interested in watching this kind of commentary live uh, or asking me questions about gameplay, that's definitely where you can find me. If you're interested in having your replay reviewed, you can head on over to the Discord, which will be linked in the description below. 
on the Discord, there's a channel called Coach's Corner, and that's where we talk about the replays, and you can submit replays for review. One thing I do want to note, we'll pause it real quick. You'll notice that there's a lot of tanks, such as this KV-2 right here. The hit points say 860 out of 960. That's because this replay was actually done on patch 1.8 but I'm recording it since my client has been patched to 1.9, which means the client is expecting all of these tanks to be at a higher health when in fact they weren't in this particular replay. So just wanted to explain why that looked that way before we got too deep into this one. So I see tow missiles headed into the crossing area. That was one of the initial locations that I suggested. This is pretty decent. We'll see after his Binox go up what kind of... So his, his view range is deep enough here. So I'm just pointing out on the minimap. So we'll definitely spot this gap here. So everything between here and here, we have pretty good odds of spotting. This little gap between these two buildings here, this here, we might have trouble spotting tanks in this back corner there because it is at the very edge of our spotting circle. So if they're offering any sort of reasonable camo, we likely won't have shots on them because we won't see them. One thing to note, these bushes just above that area is a popular tank destroyer spot for the enemy team. So if you do get spotted in this uh, area, you want to try and hide your tank as best as you can. So we see that tow missiles kind of hiding his tank right here. Normally, once I've gotten into this position, I would be shimmying my tank to try and get my gun as close to this wall as possible so that the only view of my tank would be about this much. And the rest of my tank would be hidden, providing a smaller target. However, in order to get this view range, he's got Binox deployed. So in this scenario, I would not be shimmying my tank. I've also got a camo net up, and I know the E25 has stellar camo even after firing. So in this particular scenario, I would not be shimmying my tank, but normally that is something I would be trying to do after getting into this position. So we see we have very limited allies heading to the field, which kind of makes sense considering how many artillery pieces are in this game. All right, we see that they've got a pretty big overmatch in the field. The 45 TP and the KV-2 is lit. We have our heavies in place. The STRV in the minimap there hasn't spotted anything. So right now, I would say we've probably been sitting way too long in this location. And the reason why I would say that is if we look at the minimap, these two heavies have been spotted, so they're not crossing here. It's unlikely that too many of these other tanks would have crossed in that area, especially since these two heavies are providing us vision, which at least means likely nobody's crossed without us seeing it. However, on the other side of the map, we've already lost a light tank. We've only got one left, the T50-2 there, and we've got a T25 AT. We have a T78 trying to move into position, and we still have a T20 in base. However, that's only three tanks trying to hold up these three, plus there's a Chiri in the back, plus there's a Super Hellcat in the back. There's probably another Super Hellcat in the back. If not, the other one might be over here, or the su 15 t might be over there. Given that the 1-2 line is weak right now, uh, what I would likely be doing is trying to decide whether I want to, because the E25 has excellent mobility, if I want to relocate to the 1-2 line to help shore up those defenses, or if I want to assist the heavies at the zero line pushing through. So that's what I would be moving to do right now. Looks like the heavies are pushing through and across. The T-78 is getting into position with the, A the T-25 AT. The T-20 is way in the back in the dip, so he's not providing any fire. We did spot an... SU-152 in the crossing here, which is interesting. We've got an IKV-65 in the back. So we get a little bit of early damage here without taking any, which are good trades. However, on the other side of the map, we've already lost two allies. 
So right now, as a team, we've made bad trades. As an individual player, we've made okay trades. Debatably, if you were over on the 1-2 line, your team might have been able to trade better depending on how deep those light tanks were at. I would definitely be looking to relocate right now. Oh, the IKV might come across, but I don't think he will because he's already taken damage from you and couldn't spot you. So the 45 TP looks like he's going to go put pressure on the VK-3002M. We've got a Super Hellcat in the back. We've got two heavies on the SU with the IKV backing him up. And now we've got a Cromwell all the way at J1, followed by a T50-2 and a Skoda T40. I would be looking to defend my cap at this point. I'd be turning around and hightailing it towards the weak side to just try and slow them down as much as possible to give my heavies as long as possible. Another play I might consider is going after the KV-2 or 45 TP, but I'm not going to win those trades very well or easily in an E25. So that's not a play I want to make. Okay, so our team did clean up that Cromwell, which kind of evened out the 1-2 line. We're still spending a lot of time in this gap, which I feel could is somewhat wasted, because now our VK-3002M has just died. So it's still a tough match right now. We have these heavies that no longer have resistance in the middle of the map here. So what might happen is they might push through towards you, or they might fall back and try and shore up this side here. So I, I don't think I would try to engage them one on one because I just can't. In this tank, you don't have the armor to hold up against it. What you need to do is find a more favorable position, which is further away, which again might be closer to your cap. That 45 TP might be presenting an opportunity here. OK, so what we saw, I'm going to just zoom into the mini map, make this a little easier to draw on. So we see this 45 TP in here and he's looking to go this way. So one thing that we could do is roll way up on this ledge and look for side shots in the 45 TP. Alternatively, we can jet around down here and get behind these bushes and look for shots this way. I think the KV-2 will either follow the 45 TP or head back here and shore up this way. Because that makes sense. If he tries to push through, he might end up hitting a lot of tanks that he's not seeing right now. And then these guys will be able to clean up and come in behind him. That's probably what he might be thinking right now, and that's probably what he wants to avoid. So I see we are relocating. We're probably doing this maybe a little bit late. The KV-2 looks like he's flanking the SU-152. Isn't a bad idea, especially if you can penetrate him from behind. Or take the attention off of your other heavy and medium over there. Especially since the IKV-65 has left his support. He was supporting the SU-152, but because the IKV left the 152, he was no longer able to support him. And there's that tank up there in that popular sniping position, the medium there. So one thing I want to point out here is this is not the greatest position to be in. Uh, what you probably want to do is roll over to these bushes to give you a better angle to this 45 TP. You can spot for yourself, roll back so the bushes become opaque, and then fire through them almost without guarantee that you'll be spotted. Almost guarantee that. Another thing you need to note, you now have these tanks that are pretty deep. You have very little map control in the field. So something you might want to consider is heading up maybe over here or over here to try and get supporting fire in this area because we need to secure this field and help these guys out a little bit. Okay, so you're moving a little bit further over to try and get a better angle. Although if you fire, you'll likely be spotted. It depends on the view range of the 45 TP. You're still losing your base. Yeah, you did get spotted. You're losing your artillery now too. So any sort of support that you might have had later in the match in the field is now also being destroyed. So I see you are moving over there to try and assist your team, which is probably maybe a little bit late. It's definitely late. Uh, we probably could have held out a lot longer against these guys. So I just want to 
point out once we get up here into this position. Okay, we're finally in a position to help our team. But look. Look at. We've already lost almost every tank over here. The only thing left is the FE-304 and the Super Hellcat. You only have two tanks left. If you were up here at the very beginning, you guys could have won this side. I mean, the Super Hellcat, the, both of these Super Hellcats are pretty low on hit points. If you were here earlier and you were there with your team, it's likely you could have finished these tanks off while still keeping some of your allies alive in the process, which would give you better macro trades in terms of teammates, right? You want to try and keep your teammates alive because ultimately that will help you win the game. You do have shots in the Hellcat. Okay, he's now pretty low. There we go. Yeah, we'll definitely finish him off. One more shot. There it is. Now let's go for the other Super Hellcat. This is good. Once we clean up the field, we can go straight to artillery. This match is actually looking a lot more winnable suddenly. Because all they've got left out there is that KV-2, the 45 TP. These only... The only tanks unspot that have been unspotted so far are the artillery pieces. So I would be going straight for that Super Hellcat to kill him so that my Super Hellcat lives. And don't hesitate here. There's not that many tanks left. I'd just drive straight at him. I'd take the hit because you'll take one hit and then kill him. I'm pretty sure that building's destructible. I would drive straight through that building and just drive at him. He may not even expect it. You saw your Super Hellcat just took damage. You probably could have gone in as, as soon as you saw him take damage, but you probably would have been better off taking that hit for him, maybe. So getting in there and being more aggressive probably would have been the better choice. You also would have had more damage right now. At least one more shot. All right, so now we have an opportunity to take a ton of map control from the team. So... All they have that's unspotted now are three artillery pieces, and they are most certainly somewhere in this area. They're somewhere in here. In this area are the rest of artillery. You've got a T-29 facing down three opposing tanks, but he he can work this corner pretty well. He can stay alive, uh, stay alive long if he plays his vehicle well. What you need to do with this Super Hellcat is take all of this map control. You need to own all of this area. All of it. And you can do that very fast in this vehicle. What you want to do is get up on the one line and basically just make this rotation and go this way. By doing that, you take out all three artillery pieces. Or alternatively, if you really don't want to do it that way, if you want to go even faster, you can get up on this hill, take out any artillery you can see, and then you'll have really good angles of fire looking this way, okay? The reason why I really, really strongly suggest making that play is because if you try to engage any of these tanks and you aren't in the city when you're engaging them, you have three vehicles of indirect fire that will be essentially cross-firing you, which basically means you'll be taking more damage than you're able to shoot out. So you want to try and get tanks out of the game, and the best tanks to remove right now are artillery pieces. So it looks like you guys are just beelining to help the T-29, which isn't a horrible choice. I would say it's probably not a great choice. because I would definitely be looking to remove the artillery from the game to make this match winnable. Because once artillery is removed from the game, then you can use cap pressure to draw those tanks that were previously in the field or in the city out of the city towards your guns. See, now we're gonna end up in this crossfire I was talking about earlier. So now, Granted, the KV-2 is a one-shot, but the 45 TP is going to be in this area as well because they know what's happening. You guys are headed towards the cap location. But now, you're going to be forced to engage this direction, and every artillery piece that was previous out here will then have free shots on you while you're trying to finish off their direct fire tanks. Which puts you at a disadvantage. Woo, you got lucky with that shot. Holy cow. That was really lucky that he missed that one. 45 TP. We got pinned. We're trying to get away from him. We used our kit. 
This was a bold choice. If you get tracked again, you could get totally screwed. You do have your Super Hellcat helping you. Okay, he did back off. So we're going to look at the M12. We've loaded HE. I'm not sure I would have done that. So the M12 doesn't have a ton of hit points as it is. It took you three shots of HE when you could have done three shots of AP and had better odds at penetrating him because the HE can detonate on these tracks, the spaced armor, and it'll do a lot less damage. So I would say AP is probably, especially if you're on the move, AP is a little bit more reliable at taking him down. And with your incredible rate of fire, I don't think there's going to be a huge difference whether you do that or not. So right now that Hellcat is keeping the 45 TP at bay. I wouldn't be turning around. I would still be trying to chase down artillery in this instance. Oh, he's going across there, it looks like. So again, that's 20 damage when we should have been doing 135 damage. I don't know. I think it's, uh, it's 115 or 135, when something like that. We've also lost a gunner, which means it's going to be even harder to hit that target now. You should probably heal your gunner. You still have HE loaded, which means you're even more likely to just splash it instead of penetrating it. I just don't think the alpha difference between AP and HE is worth the trade-off when AP is just a little bit more reliable in this scenario. So your Hellcat's trying to 1v1 the 45 TP and now you're going after our artillery. So if you had done the opposite and gone after artillery first, then you guys could be 2v1 against the 45 TP instead of 1v1 between the Hellcat and the 45 TP while you chase down artillery. So the 45 TP just destroyed your Hellcat, which is a little bit rough, but he should be pretty low on health at this point. Yeah, he's got a little over a quarter. Hmm. So they definitely have a tank on cap, so that tells us exactly where at least one tank is. We know the AMX 13 F3 ran away, it's tough to say where he was. I don't think he was fast enough to make this move. So I think what he did is he wrapped around this way and he's in here somewhere. So while you're going after the opposing capping tank. Okay, there he is. Do you have time to turn and uh, it looks like he's hidden. No, nope, don't waste time. Go for the resets. Right now, the FE-304 is isolated. We want to, when you're the last tank standing, you always want to try and isolate a vehicle into a 1v1 engagement and destroy them as quickly as you can. Right now, the FE-304 is in a 1v1. We can outspot him, we can outtrade him. That's going to be a good match there. Then we can try and 1v1 their other artillery piece and then go for that 45 TP. We don't have time to sit up in this uh, sniper's nest. We just got a barrel in there and hope that he's not pre-aimed at us. Again, I would be going for AP. It's far more reliable at penetrating. Your gunner is still dead. You could have done damage already. Right into the tracks. So HE will detonate on spaced armor, which is what the track is. And anytime HE detonates on the outside of a tank, you're already cutting its damage in half. And then it's even further reduced by whatever armor plate is then on the other side of it. So you'll be doing less than half of your alpha damage anytime you're not penetrating. That's slightly made up for it. Wow, that hitbox lagged a little bit behind that tank, but you managed to get the kill. I would still be reloading AP at this point. Although the Amex 13 might be a little bit easier to pen, you still have a dead gunner, which would give you much better control of this situation with the better accuracy with that gunner alive. I'm guessing you just don't realize it. One. Two. Three. Okay. We just made three shots. None of them penetrated. They hit, surprisingly. But we made three shots and none of them penetrated. Right now, if we were firing AP, that tank would be dead. Guaranteed. So, you've lowered your effectiveness in battle by selecting an ammunition type that maybe is less reliable, especially when you've got a dead gunner. If you can accurately shoot into the softest parts of that tank, then it makes sense to use HE. But in this instance, 
HE isn't going to be any faster at destroying this tank, and it's a detriment because if you miss the right spot of the armor, then you end up doing a lot less damage. I see we're going to chase him down. This is a good idea. You want to try and kill isolated tanks as quickly as you can. I would be going straight into that dip. Although we don't know where the 45 TP is. If the 45 TP is supporting that AMX, it might be a tough call. It's still winnable. 100% easily winnable. Yep, we're setting up to try and go after that AMX. I'm surprised the AMX went in like that because what their enemy, what the enemy team should be doing right now is allowing the 45 TP to take the engagement, the brunt, while the AMX 13 sits in the back and supports with indirect fire. Okay, so right in this position where we're at right now, HE makes sense because all you're seeing is that gun mantlet, which is very thin armor, and hitting that and penetrating that is pretty reliable. The problem is we still have a dead gunner, so hitting it is unlikely. Less likely. See, we scattered there. He might be dead already. That's five shots. Six. This guy has lived through six shots. His efficiency is amazing. Seven. So it took us seven shots to take down a 300 health tank, which it shouldn't. Okay. We just, the 45 TP just missed us. We know that he's somewhere in the middle of the map. I see an ally pinged. I don't know if that's accurate, but we do know from the angle that this shell hit that he is somewhere in this area, somewhere out here. We know that. So the best thing we can do is get into a position to try and counter him while not straying too far from cap. We do have the speed on him. What I would do in this scenario, let's take a look at the minimap. Okay, so this is really important, all right? You know, actually, well, this is what I would do, is I would squeeze in through here, I would come up here, I would double back, and I would get bushed either here or here, let the Binox go up to see if I can spot him, and then I would push through. And here's why. There's a really important observation that you may not have made, okay? You've bounced 240 damage from the 45 TP. Ah, let's do some math. The 45 TP is not using the top gun. He's using the 240 alpha gun, okay? That means for him to kill you, he would have to high roll both shells to kill you. Which means more than likely, it's going to take him at least three shots. The 240 Alpha at tier 7 is roughly 7 to 8 seconds for most tanks. So that gives you 14 seconds to get damage out at your reload of 2.5. I think you can take him down. He's got less than a quarter of his health left. You can literally drive at this 45 TP, and as long as you can penetrate his tank, you will outtrade him and win this match. So I would not be waiting for things to happen. I would be just going after this 45 TP. Now, if the 45 TP was running the top tier gun, which is, we just bounced him again. That was really lucky right there. Um, which is 300, 320, something like that. I know you would die in two shots if he had the top gun, which means that this engagement would be a lot more difficult. You're definitely dark now. It's gonna be really hard for him to spot you. And I don't think you need to sit back here. Also, what will help you in this engagement is healing your gunner. <laughs> right now, it's like having a stormtrooper behind the tank gun there. I see you're just trying to feel out to see if he's actually coming at you, but I don't think he is. There's only four minutes left in the match. You know you have the, uh, the DPM advantage and you have the camo advantage. You have the speed advantage. You have every advantage over this 45 TP. I would be looking at just pushing in and just trying to finish it off. There's only four minutes left. You don't have a lot of time um, to go hunt him down. He's probably, if he isn't just camping in the middle, he's probably running away. If I was in his shoes, I would be looking at going towards my cap and waiting for you to come to me or going for the draw because in a 45 TP with the low alpha gun, knowing that you have over half of your health, I'm going to lose those trades. What I would be looking to do is either draw the match because I can't really win it 
or I would be trying to come up with a way to win it, which might be going through um, this dip here. I really hate going for draws, so I'd probably be trying to win it, but the more intelligent play would probably be to just sit on cap and wait for you to come to me. Because either you let the draw happen because you have the advantage and you, for whatever reason, didn't want to press it, or you try and get the win, in which case then the 45 TP gets that first shot advantage and has a slightly better chance at winning as opposed to going in. I mean, it's not a horrible choice here to just try and play it safe. Sit back, let your spotting do your work for you, and just kind of hang out and wait to see if the 45 TP comes in, but I don't think he's going to. There's two minutes left. It's going to take you more than 90 seconds to cap him out. If he's run away into the city, then you need to get on and get cap pressure rolling immediately. Max has just joined the uh, YouTube video for everybody. That's Sir Maximus Pickles. Still trying to spot him out, but I don't think he's over here anymore. I think he left. I see you typed in, he's on the hill. If you believe that he's on the hill, then yes, definitely the right play would be to come through here and either get cap pressure going to draw him off that hill or circle back on his hill and get passive looking this way and see if you can spot him out. And if you can't, then get pressure rolling. This is an instance where cap pressure would help you, but now we're running out of time to use that to our advantage. We spent too much time waiting for him to make the play. But definitely, I probably would have just gone after him really aggressively at this point in the match. And to be honest, I might even be loading APCR. And the reason why that would be isn't because you need it to penetrate him, but you want to have higher chances of penetrating him. You want to give yourself every advantage, and every shell that bounces means he's more likely to win the trade. So to try and give yourself the leg up in that advantage, I might be trying to load APCR. But again, it's... It, that's more about the odds than it is about what's necessary. The AP is perfectly serviceable at penetrating his tank. Still don't see him, so we're going to get cat pressure going. But notice, cat pressure is at 137, and the time left is 110. We did spot him there. Just YOLO after him. You can kill him in two shots. You can kill him in... <laughs> within two and a half seconds of the first shot going in. Just take the hit, is what I would say. He's not going to reload in time. You're going to get three shots off before he can even reload. You can't be afraid to just lose hit points at this point. That's one. <laughs> he managed to bounce him again. This poor guy bounced three shells on you. If he had penned to those three shells, this would have been a different match, but I think he got a little lucky on those. So that's going to do it for uh, this Coach's Corner episode. Again, if you enjoy this kind of content, uh, please subscribe, like the video. And, uh, you know, if <laughs> if you disagree with any of my advice or any of my observations or you notice something I missed, let me know in the comments. I'm always curious to see what you guys uh, write down there. And uh, we'll see you next time.